But with Scrum, it's the same thing. But then, it, as I said, as I mentioned before, it has its own set of, um, I can call it as a language, its own language. It, it has got its own constructs, its own set of syntax and semantics that it would, but still it is, it is flexible, it is still agile. Even though it has got these, these things, it's like, for example, if you go to um, a doctor, a hospital, and you have got to follow certain uh, norms, certain things, right? You've got to take, uh, go to the reception, tell what the problem is, perhaps get a ticket or you know, some kind of uh, a token. You, you are in the queue, whether it is online or physically, it's still is the same. And then you actually meet, you meet the concerned doctor Either, sometimes it could be a general physician or it could be a specialist doctor, right? So depending on that, you would go to the doctor. You explain your problem first. You can't just say, give me a solution, right? The doctor has to do what they call as diagnosis, which means they need to understand what the problem is. And then they systematically go in terms of under, understanding the root of the problem, the symptoms, sorry, not even problem. They first would ask you what are the symptoms. Then you would actually, they would, they would tell you what the real problem is based on the symptoms that you have as a patient. And then they do this diagnosis and then finally they come up with some kind of um, uh, a solution that would fit and that would address the problem, right? So it's a methodology, it's, it's a set of tools. If you can't expect to do any way, your way when you, when you want to you know, get a advice from a doctor, this is the way, only way, whether it is in, uh, in the US, whether it's in uh, UK, Europe, India, anywhere, it's the same set of um, uh, same same methodology that you would follow, say perhaps same set of techniques and tools as well. You know, it, it, in spite of all the medical research that has been done in the last few years, it still is the same way that has to be done. You can't do it any differently. And with all the, for example, you've got Babylon Health, which is a new healthcare um, uh, system which has come through online, very, very popular nowadays. Uh, it, it is trying to disrupt the healthcare market. It's still, you can't expect to do anything different. You still have got to tell your symptoms and, and the, the physician on the other, other, other end, whether it's online or not, they would look at the symptoms, they'll have to do an analysis, they would ask you questions, and then they would come up with uh, the, the real problem, why those symptoms are coming, and then they would address the problem, right? With either surgery or long-term, short-term, whatever it is. Same with Scrum. Scrum is not different. Scrum is a process, is a lightweight process, an agile methodology. It also comes with its own language, and that's what we're learning today and tomorrow, the language and the lingo of, of Scrum. That's where we've got sprints and the Scrum masters and the product owners and all these things, the backlog. There are different languages, different terms that we get used to once we start working on this. And then it actually has got this backlog, sprint backlog. It has got this concept of a two to four week sprint, after which you, have, you, you can deliver that as a new functionality. And then you do, once you're done with the sprint, you can actually look back and see how you did it. What was the product that came up? How is the product performing? Look at the process. And that's what we call as retrospective. Look at how you did the work. It's not just the product. So the beauty with Scrum is you actually look at two things separately. One is a product that you delivered, right? And the other one is a process. How you did, how you did the work, how you delivered the work. So the work itself, the work product itself, the website, the web application, mobile application, digital platform, whatever it is, that's what is definitely up for review. You have to evaluate, you have to see how it is, whether they've added good features, whether they're doing well, whether they've been accepted well by the customer, or all, all that stuff. As well as you look at the process at itself, every two to three weeks, you look at how you've been working on. Do you need any amends to that? Do you need any changes to that? Do you need any improvements over that. And that's why Scrum is like continuous improvement. It's not just doing once and then say, hey, I'm the best, I'm the best developer, I've done fantastic. No, you can't just stop there. You need to continuously evolve, continuously improve. And that's why they've got all these different ceremonies. And then we, this is a continuous cycle of, of, of um, you know, deliveries and releases. It can't be just one time.